If you've tried normal roof framing, but you really want to confuse and irritate everyone on the job site, why not try joining a roof with two different pitches? So special thanks to Eric, Kevin, Tim, and Arlo for tolerating this nonsense on the job site and inspiring this video. So with a nice boring roof, it's got the same pitch all the way around, the fascia lines up nicely, the wall, the top plate there is the same height all the way around, and that top plate just lines up real nice. If that's too easy, and you know you just want to make everyone struggle, you can try a roof with two pitches. So what I have here is a three and a half and twelve pitch, and a five and twelve pitch, and you can already see that there are some problems. So the fascia doesn't want to line up when I have the wall the same height and the roofs don't plane out very nicely. There's a lot of problems and by attempting to solve the problems I'm going to cause other problems. There's lots of ways to attempt to approach this. The way that I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to keep the overhang from wall to fascia the same on both sides and I'm going to try and get the fascias to line up. So that's this version over here. So I'm trying to get the fascias to line up, I'm trying to keep the overhang the same. What you'll notice right away at the beginning is that the walls are not the same height. So if I spin around to the back, you can see one of the first problems is if this is an eight foot tall wall, and that's the double top plate, the other wall is going to be a different height to the top plate. So that's its own issue. So to begin with you won't be able to use 8 foot plywood on one of those walls. I'm going to ignore cuts that are typical that would show up in your speed square manual. So at first it looks like everything's going to be okay but I'll look here at what I think Tim called the lizard's tongue and so this is the valley condition that I end up with. So a few things start to happen. One of the first things that happens is the distance between the bottom of that common rafter and the fascia and this common rafter and the fascia is a little different and it gets more different the more different these two roofs are. And I've also got a little difference shown here. I'll get into this what's going on in the valley in just a second. So if I go to the top and I delete the plywood for a second you can kind of see what's going on. So a lot of times the top of the fascia will be cut to plane out with a common rafter like that. But this one's doing something different than this one and you end up with if this and this were the same piece of wood, if they were both, say, 2 by 8s or something like that, this one starts off a little higher up. And so that means that the bottoms won't line up unless you take some extra effort and rip that down to make them line up. And then, you know, that will have sharp edges and that one won't. So it's something that has to be thought about. In my attempt to make this look less, less ugly, the uh, approach that I'm using here is to have a typical valley slapped up against a typical valley of different pitches. So this would be your valley for the 5 and 12 and this would be your valley for the 3 and a half and 12 and a few things will start to happen of course. The bottoms will not line up like this. You will have to scab on a little scribe piece so you'll have to trace this one onto another little piece and screw them together and bondo and so forth until they look uh, pretty after they've been painted in order to achieve that. There's another thing going on here and that is that frequently a cut will be made along the top of the valley right there or along the top of this one and you can see they're doing something different and that's in order to get the plywood to plane out nicely so if I delete that for a second you can see how the plywood wants to plane out over that or how this plywood wants to plane out on the top of that. In order to make 
most of these cuts frequently you'd need your skill saw and you can usually adjust one direction the angle and so you want to be careful which way you're cutting because you might accidentally make a mirror image of what you're trying to make and then your speed square or framing square and you'll use that to uh, draw the line you'll be cutting on so if you have a 3d program the way you can achieve that the way you can figure out what to do to figure out the saw angle you cut a section perpendicular to the framing member so you would cut this way to see the saw angle to figure out the line that you would draw for some of the other pieces later on you would cut your section lengthwise parallel along the length of the member so if I go up here in plan view there's my little section cutting tool this is where the valleys are going like that and so I'm going to cut perpendicular through those two valleys and I've already drawn my lines but basically here's the little valley on one side right it's following the underside of the plywood here's the valley on the other roof pitch and here's that little fakie scribe piece at the bottom and so what you do is you use your line tool draw some lines and you want a level line like that and a line that follows along the underside of the plywood of this side and that gives you the angle of the saw blade 16.4 16 degrees and the same thing on the other side here level line across through that valley and another line indicating the plywood of that pitch and so that's about 11 11 or 12 degrees so if I go back to this real quick take off the plywood you would set your saw at I want to say it was was it 16 degrees and 11 degrees roughly and that would take care of that top angle for those two different valleys another odd thing that happens is a blocking a blocking looks weird you can see that because this wall is taller right look at the way that blocking looks I've only got one piece of blocking and look at the way that blocking looks if I look at it from the back you can kind of see this is that blocking right and that blocking has got a different look to it so that's another little bit of weirdness that's part of this attempt if you look at the valley rafter here look at the size and proportion of that if you spin around over here this one's going to look different and it'll get more extreme the more extreme the roof pitch difference is um, the builder will notice this I'm not sure who else will notice it and another little issue is normally in plan view here this is a nice 90 degree angle usually and usually this is a 45 degree angle but because of this weirdness of the overstack roof here the weirdness of these two different roof pitches you'll have to add in this weird little sliver of an overstack here and so that'll be a weird condition that might annoy the roofer as well when he's doing the valley and I've put one of the overstack pieces just to give an idea so the top part here this is just a typical valley and this cut here is typical so you can find that in your framing square instructions the bottom is a little bit weirder and so in order to find out what to do there again if you have a 3d software you cut lengthwise like this to figure out the line you're going to draw and then you cut this way to figure out the angle of the saw blade so I'll go in plan view again here was that little funky piece I was looking at so if I zoom out for a second there's that little sliver over stack here's that little piece of wood that I was just showing I'm going to use this section cut tool here lengthwise and that will give me the pencil line and I've already drawn this here but basically you could make a little you know 90 degree mark with your speed square uh, you can you know you can draw the lines with your tool as I did here and see that that's basically 22 and a half degrees or you can go from your little you know square cut line there like that and just measure and that's one foot two and five sixteenths and when you draw your pencil line you just want to make sure it's that length now of course what's going to matter is this is a five and a half inch piece of wood if this was a different sized framing member 
it would be different. So that's why maybe knowing the angle will be helpful. So that gives you the line that you mark on the piece of wood to do your cut. And then going back in 3D here for a second. So what we just determined was the line that will create that cut. And you trace that line right there. 1 foot 2 and I don't know, 15 sixteenths or whatever it was. And then in order to figure out the angle of that, I will now cut a section this way instead of this way, this way. So back in plan view and now I'm using the section tool cutting perpendicular through that framing member. So I've already drawn my little lines up here. So here's that framing member. Here's the horizontal line, level line right there. This follows along the roof pitch. That's the framing member. And so that will be the angle of the cut. And it's about 16 degrees. So if I go back to 3D for a second, delete that, that little piece of plywood. So that's about a 16 degree angle. So. Hopefully that convinced you to stick to the nice boring roof where all the pitches are the same.